is hitting a 263. That's number five in the American League. And here's the Texas lineup. Rangers will lead off with Cecil Espy in center. Fred Manrique at second and Rafael Palmero at first base. Ruben Sierra is the right fielder. The DH batting fifth is Harold Baines. Pete and Cavilla in left. Mike Stanley, the catcher. Jeff Kunkel at short and Steve Bouchelle batting ninth at third. And the defense tonight for the Oakland Athletics identical to last night. Ricky Henderson and Dave Henderson left and center. Jose Canseco is in right. Around the infield, Mark McGuire, Mike Gallego, Walt Weiss, and Tony Phillips. Gary Steinbach behind the plate, and Mike Moore makes his 35th appearance and start of 1989. He won his 18th victory a couple of starts ago, that on the 19th against Cleveland. That set a personal career high for Moore. It's the Rangers. Moore has had 19 games, all of them starts against Texas. He's 8-4 and four with a 390 ERA. And that includes a start and a win over the Rangers this year at Arlington on June the 11th. Dale Ford, the home plate umpire tonight on the bases. Greg Kosk at first, crew chief Larry Barnett at second, and John Hirsch back at third. Mike Moore delivers a fastball down low, fouled off. We're underway at 9.06 Texas time. Cecil hitting at 254, 310 is his on base average. He's hit three homers, 31 RBIs. And SB a 257 hitter from the left side. He hits a fly ball to right field. Jose Canseco looks into the twilight and makes the catch for the first out. It is a nice evening in Oakland, 66 degrees. Winds from the north at 10. But the flags are limp at the moment. And the forecast basically sky is clear and cool, but very comfortable. One out, Fred Manrique, the hitter. In this series, the Rangers have yet to see anybody reach base in the first inning. Seven consecutive hitters have gone down. Manrique hitting at 301. And Moore gets one up high, but by him. Four homers and 51 RBIs as Manrique faces Moore. Breaking ball down and away. Right side, McGuire to the pitcher. Never bothered to use the glove, and it's a good thing he didn't. Just beat Manrique. Nice play by the Oakland defense. Two outs. And the positioning of McGuire and Moore on this play is textbook. The, hand, the way they handled the ball was not exactly the way you'd like to see it done. Bare hand to bare hand. <laughs> but the throw was there in time. McGuire with those big hands. Both he and Mike Moore pretty good-sized guys, and that's uh, not really as difficult a play as you might think with the size of their hands. Rafael Palmero with the bases empty. Two outs and more with a strike. Rafael hitting 279, eight homers, 64 runs batted in. And a breaking ball. Swung on and missed. This guy's making quick work of the Rangers in the first inning. Dave Oliver at third base and Toby Hera at first. No action yet. Here's the 0-2. Fastball is up and away. Mike Moore is a former Oral Roberts University collegiate player coming out of ORU in Tulsa. He was a number one draft choice of Seattle. And a lot of losing seasons with that club and finally got out to a winner. High chopper and he'll retire. The Rangers 1-2-3. On three balls hit pretty softly. That's how the third game of this series gets underway. Athletics are number six in the league, hitting a 262. And here's the Oakland lineup against Jamie Moyer. Ricky Henderson leads off. Dave Henderson, big power hitter in this series, bat second. Jose Canseco is third, followed by Mark McGuire. Terry Stunbach is fifth. The DH, Dave Parker, batting sixth, followed by Tony Phillips, Mike Gallego, and Walt Weiss. Ranger defense this evening in Cavilia, Espy, and Sierra in the outfield. Palmero, Manrique, Kunkel, and Bouchelle on the infield. Mike Stanley behind the plate. And Jamie Moore, the 26-year-old left-hander, making his 15th start and appearance for the year. His fifth since coming off the disabled list. He has lost his last two most recently. Seattle defeated him by an 8-3 count. That was on Thursday in Arlington. First appearance ever against the Athletics. And Moyer with a fastball up high. Ricky Henderson hitting a 274 on base average of 410. 
power with 12 homers, 56 RBIs, speed with 76 steals. A ball and a strike. An early update on the contenders tonight. Toronto is leading at Detroit. 3-1 in the late innings. We'll keep an eye on that one for you. Royals are at California down the coast in about 20, 25 minutes or so. Tom Gordon throws for Kansas City tonight against Jim Abbott of California. Two balls and a strike to Ricky Henderson. And Moyer with a breaking ball, dropping it in, two and two. Cubs beat Montreal 7-2, so they had a good time after clinching last night. Ricky says, I may not see one better than that. It broke right down the middle. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Fastball up high. Count goes full. Henderson followed by Henderson. Dave is next. He's hit two homers and driven home four in this series. And it's hit into center. Drifting toward right center is Espy. And Sierra collides with him. Ruben caught the ball. Espy walking away in disgust as those two continue the communication problems they have had throughout the season. Well, I don't know how many times we're going to see that this year. That has to be the sixth time that we have seen it just in the road games that we have done, Bob. And, you know, it gets to a point where there really is no excuse for this type of miscommunication after a full year of playing side by side. They've got to come up with a better routine than this. Granted, both of them are concentrating on the ball, but there has to be some line of communication opened after all this time uh, playing next to each other. It appeared on the second replay that Sierra was calling the ball, but it had appeared on the first replay that Espy had called it first. See, there's Cecil saying, I got it, and Ruben ended up with it. One out, any way you slice it. And Espy will play deep for Dave Henderson, who's ahead in the count, one ball, no strikes. He has 15 homers on the year now, 79 RBIs. Dave talking about his game-winning homer last night. And there's an extra base hit down the left field line. Henderson digs for two. And Cavillia up with it, no chance for a play. And the guy they call Hindu here in Oakland keeps hurting the Rangers with extra base hits in the series. Said last night he was just trying to hit a fly ball to drive home a run. He said sometimes fly balls go over the fence. Sometimes line drives hit just inside the bag. Now you got an off-speed pitch from Moyer out over the plate. That's that changeup, and it stayed up right in the heart of the plate. Steve Bouchel, as far to his right as he could go, the quick dive came up just a bit short, and so Dave Henderson, a one-out double is in scoring position for Canseco. With 53 RBIs in 62 games, Jose steps in. A tough lineup for a left-handed pitcher. Mike Jeffco tamed them pretty well last night. Moyer with a fastball inside. Mike Jeffco talking in the dugout earlier this evening. Thought that Canseco was really crowding the plate on him last night. That's why he was going inside to Jose with fastballs and had some success. Except with one he got out over the plate. Jose ripped it into left field for a double. Moyer goes away, and that looked like the changeup. It dipped down and away. Jamie disguises that pitch so well. He has good arm speed with the pitch. That's the key to any good changeup or any good off-speed pitch is that you're able to use the same arm speed and arm motion that you do on your other offerings. And Seiko obviously seeing fastball as he watched the arm speed and the release point, but getting the changeup. The ball and a strike to Jose, who's hitting 259. Not hitting real well here last week of the season. He's five for his last 29. There's a big breaking ball inside. Two and one. Did he hurt his wrist on that changeup? That's the left one that's been bothering him all year long.
Enrique in behind the runner and Moyer steps off. Jose Canseco it's a hard thing to do but he gets that big bat started with all that bat speed and then if he tries to slow the bat down spotting changeup that can cause some problems. Now the worst thing a big guy can do is swing and miss when you have a bad hand or a bad wrist or try and check your swing but the swing and the miss has more more a tendency to really hurt. There's a drive to left field. See you later if it's fair. It's gone. He hurt his wrist, didn't he? Down the line for number 17, RBI is number 54 and 55. Right in the wheelhouse of Jose Canseco, and he's watching it to make sure it stays fair. 459 feet on this blast, right down the left field line. And that had some hang time. They're waving it fair on the third base side. It stayed fair. Upper tank. And it's 2-0 Oakland. Jamie Moyer has given up his 10th homer of the year. Mark McGuire, the hitter, with a count of 101. Breaking ball low and inside. Ball two. Now, if, he, if he hurt his wrist, that home run certainly makes it feel a lot better. That's better than any ice therapy you could apply to it. Yeah, there's a high fastball. McGuire can't reach it. And you have to think some groans just went up in Kansas City. Or excuse me, in Anaheim where the Royals are getting ready to take on the Angels. They probably got the satellite hooked up to this one. And they saw Canseco hit one way out of here. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Instead, Moyer will step off. And the Ranger bullpen is busy early for the third time in this series. Daryl Ackerfelds is up in the early innings, but he hasn't appeared in the ball games yet. 2 2 pitch down the line into the corner and Cavilla over to get it. McGuire into second base. Strong throw by in but too high. Three consecutive extra base hits. And all three pitches for the two doubles and a home run have been about in the same location. Belt high right down the middle of the plate. The one to McGuire, maybe a bit lower, but still right in the power zone. And boy, you put Henderson and Canseco and McGuire up there and throw pitches in the middle of the plate in that height. You're lucky to get any of them back, to be quite honest. Jamie Moore, as we mentioned, struggling with control in the the control he's struggling with is not the ability to throw a strike. It's the ability to keep the ball out of the middle of the plate. Control within the strike zone has been Jamie's problem. Now he faces right-handed hitting Terry Steinbach. There's the breaking ball for a strike. Steinbach hitting at 271, seven homers, 42 runs batted in. A big first inning for the home team on a night when they could clinch. We'll know in a couple of hours if that is true. Tony La Russa wants it over with now. There's a fastball near the inside corner. It's a count of one and two. Steinbach really in a slump. The starting catcher in the All-Star game for the second consecutive year is four for his last 45. He was hitting 322 at the All-Star break in July. Ruben retrieves a bullpen ball. But Steinbach has made some opposing managers smile second half of the season he's only hit 206 last year he hit 217 before the break and then 302 afterwards so Terry can't get off the seesaw in terms of his season performances 
one two delivery and Moyer just missed on the inside part of the plate. Jamie makes his 15th start tonight with a record of four and eight. Just better than four and a half is the ERA. Big breaking ball fair over the bag long throw for Bouchel and Palmero drops the ball. very quickly turning into a nightmare for the Rangers. Bouchelle, a nice play behind the bag and the throw, a long one, was pretty close to on target. I would think Rafael Palmero would tell you that 99% of the time he will come up with that throw. Wasn't really even a short hop. Just right at the base of the glove where I came in contact with the dirt. Right there. Dave Parker, the hitter. Runners at the corners, still only one out. And Moyer whips it by him. They still haven't posted hit or error yet. In all honesty, a major league first baseman has to catch that ball. So it really has to be an error. But no scoring decision yet. There's a fastball up and in. A ball and a strike. What Jamie Moyer needs right here is a double play ball right at somebody. Get out of this thing with two runs in. Oakland gets three or more with Mike Moore on the mound, and it could be a tough night for the visiting team. There's a foul to the left. Jamie Moyer getting the ball up, but getting it in on Dave Parker. Now it's one and two. Now they have posted the error on Palmero. No, they've given an error to Steve Bouchelle for the throw. Hmm. There's a big breaking ball. The thinking on that call. Bouchelle didn't throw it over there on the fly, I guess. That's a pretty tough error. You got a, a ball behind the bag, deep behind the bag at third base, and make that long throw and get it in the vicinity I, I don't know Parker pops up Bouchelle and Palmero converge Raphael right in front of the mound with Jamie Moyer directing traffic and that's a big out second out of the inning there have been some bad scoring decisions in this series Fred Manrique on just a dreadful call was robbed of the hit last night watch again the throw by Bouchelle from foul territory now I've got to say if, if that's going to be a play that a normal third baseman in the big league should make that's not as glaring a mistake as the the drop by Rafael Palmero the nine catch I that's either got to be a base hit or an error on Rafael that, to my way of thinking well Moyer doesn't care about that he wants to get Phillips and keep this a two run ball game we'll see if he can do it Tony a right handed hitter hitting 257 overall his numbers as a switch hitter 265. 46 RBIs to go with four homers. Time call. Early in the game, batter's box still pretty smooth in there, so Phillips trying to dig his way in. Rangers went one, two, three, but the Aves have three hits in the inning. Two runs in, two men aboard, two outs. And a shot to right will score another. It's 3 0 Oakland. It's something that Oakland does as well as any team in baseball that come up with a big two out base hit. And the bottom of the order now, the bottom third with Phillips, Gallego, and Weiss have been very, very proficient at that driving in key runs. And another one here, an unearned run, even though it is, still really put the damper on the Rangers' activities here tonight. Runners at first and second. Tony Phillips delivers, and Mike Gallego is the hitter. 
Up and in. Gallego at 253 batter, three homers, 30 RBIs. Some interesting things being kicked around by Tony La Russa today. Walt Weiss, as we mentioned earlier in the series, since his injury with the knee has been struggling at shortstop. You might see La Russa playing Gallego at short in postseason play. Tony feels right now that Mike Gallego is playing much better than Walt Weiss is. Of course, if you have Carney Lansford back in the lineup, which he will be, that would move Tony Phillips over to second base. So that's what Oakland may open up with in postseason play against either Toronto or Baltimore. Here's the 2-0. Inside corner. Speaking of the Jays, it's eighth inning at Tigers Stadium. Still 3-1 Toronto. Blue Jays started that ball game tonight with Dave Steve against Doyle Alexander. Neither of them are still around. Outside, three and one. On deck is the man we were talking about a moment ago, struggling some in the field and at the plate, Walt Weiss. He would be the ninth hitter in this inning. Steinbach and Phillips at second and first. And Moyer pours in a breaking ball, filling the count. The runners will be moving with two down. A must out for Jamie Moyer here. And a pop fly back this way. The season series is led by the A's. Six wins to five. Rangers have the edge in this ballpark. Three wins against two losses. The season finale between these clubs takes place tomorrow afternoon. 3-2 pitch again. And a fly ball short right center. Manrique misjudged it and still makes the play. That ball had some carry on it that Fred did not expect. And he went back to make the big play. But the big blow of the first inning, Jose Canseco's two-run homer. They added another. And after one, it's Oakland three selling headache powder in the south. And for the final time this year, we'll try to give money away during our goodies home run inning. You folks might remember that Oh, just several days ago, KTVT, our flagship station in Fort Worth, Dallas, announced that it would carry the final three games of the season from Anaheim. Tonight was scheduled to and will be our final time with the Goodies home run inning, and we certainly appreciate the great sponsorship of those folks over the years. They've given us a lot of excitement to go along with Ranger homers. If Ruben hits one, Ray Isles of Fort Worth will win $1,900. That's how much... We're trying to give away tonight. Sierra has hit 28. We've had winners this year like Billy Gray of Brownsboro, Texas. He won $700 when Pete and Cavillia hit one at Detroit. Rick Smith of Lindale, Texas, May 5th, Boston. Gino Petrolli won him $900. The big bucks came later. June 21st at Fenway, Sammy Sosa won Jennifer Caton of Finley, Oklahoma, $2,800. And Mark Killinger of Oklahoma City on August 18th won $2,700 when Steve Bouchel homered at Comiskey Park. Now we'll see if Ruben or one of his teammates can give us a successful finish to 1989. Two balls and a strike to Ruben. With a league leading 118 RBIs and a high chopper. Gallego charges and couldn't get in. Mike Gallego did everything right except field the ball cleanly. He charged as he had to and made a good on-target throw. But that extra dimension of Ruben Sierra gets him to first base. It will be an error. And Gallego got in there quickly but played himself into a short hop. He reads the ball correctly. Once he commits himself, though, to charge it, he can't really stop. 
and play a longer hop. He has to continue to charge and hope that he can get there quickly enough. The throw with a good recovery by Gallego just a bit late, so Ruben aboard. Harold Baines hitting for Ronald Rutkowski of Dallas, and that was an intelligent run by Ruben Sierra. You saw him hit the home plate side of the bag. Some runners will stretch so far, they'll hit the middle of the bag or beyond, and Ruben hit the very front of the bag and thus got there in time. Harold Baines takes a strike, it's 0-2. He's hit 16 homers with 72 batted in. Watch Sierra's foot, the part of first base that it hits. Right on the near side from his perspective. Fastball outside, one and two. Rangers with the leadoff man aboard, trailing three nothing. And Harold looks at one outside, two and two. Baines four for his last eight over three ball games. And Harold's off to a good finish here, hitting 347 in the last month. Fifth best average in the American League at 318. And you know what everybody will be writing about when the Rangers go to spring training 1990. The middle of that batting order. They'll say Palmero, Sierra, Franco and Baines. And then the question marks will be pitching and defense. And maybe a little speed. But the Rangers have a mid part of that lineup that looks like it can produce for a long time. And on a breaking ball, Bain strikes out. Number one for Mike Moore. That's a split finger pitch from Mike Moore, and that really has become a, a great pitch for him because of his arm motion. He has that thing pretty well disguised. We talked about how Jamie Moore disguises his changeup. Mike Moore uses exactly the same motion in the arm angle that he does throwing the fastball with a split finger pitch. Here's Pete in Cavilla, unable to catch up with one high. Pete's hitting for Ginny Smith, the Fort Worth. Batting at 237, but 20 homers, 80 runs batted in. Up the middle, should be two. Gallego handles the pivot, and the Rangers are gone. Thanks to the folks from Goodies for sponsoring our home run inning throughout the year. None tonight. And the United broadcast is authorized by the Texas Rangers Baseball Club and any reuse without the consent of the Texas Rangers. And Gaylord Broadcasting is prohibited. Walt Weiss bats ninth. He's the Oakland leadoff man in the second inning. Jamie Moyer misses up high. Weiss hitting just 236. And he's scuffling from the right side with a mark of 218. Trying to play through that knee injury that bothered him for a good part of this season. He scrambles his bullpen teammates. Matt Young and company getting out of the way. Thank you, sir, for the souvenir. And a strike. Moyer got one at the knees. One and two. Weiss didn't like the call from Dale Ford. It's up to Jamie Moyer to get this ball game settled down now with his mates down by three. A breaking ball low. Walt Weiss, of course, last year's Rookie of the Year. Right field, well hit, it'll fall to the left of Sierra. Ruben scrambles to the line and Weiss wisely holds up. Sierra got to the ball in good fashion, would have had an easy peg to second to throw him out. But the A's have the leadoff man aboard and that is already five hits against Jamie Moyer. He's given up five hits to nine hitters. Now Weiss had been struggling, but he got a pitch up and on the inner part of the plate, able to inside out it down the right field line. He was sinking double from the time he left the plate, and only a good play by Ruben Sierra getting to the ball quickly prevented Weiss from trying to stretch that into two bases. Ricky Henderson, the hitter. Breaking ball in the dirt. 
Mike Stanley handles it. Stano getting another shot to start behind the plate this evening. Henderson reaching and following one back to the right. The ball into strike. The Rangers version of Jack in the box up and down throughout this series is Daryl Ackerfelds throwing now for the second time this evening. Oh, you're missing up high. Anderson at the age of 30, a lot of good running seasons ahead. He's still in 50 or more, went on base nine years in his career. Low and inside, three and one. They're in the ninth now at Tiger Stadium, and the Jays have added two. They lead 5 1 over Detroit. Baltimore is winning at Milwaukee so it looks like the O's will take a day off tomorrow with the Jays and open up Friday night at the Sky Dome down by a game. Into left center Espy unable to charge it the ball is by him and it might score a run. Weiss around third he will come home and it's four nothing. <laughs> Valentine has seen his outfielders handcuffed a couple of times in this series. Last night, beating Cavillia, handcuffed on a line shot by Conseco. And tonight, Espy kind of caught in between the line drive that started. It looked as though it was going to stay up for him, and Cecil got too close to the bounce. Didn't get his body in front of it to compound the error. So it skipped on by him to the wall, and at second is Henderson. It's 4-0 and Bobby Valentine to the mound. And Jamie Moyer is through for the night. Six hits given up. Facing only 10 hitters. And Ackerfelds is in. Back to Oakland after this timeout. Well, the new Ranger pitcher, right-hander Daryl Ackerfelds, who's working for the first time in six days. Last outing against Seattle, he worked a couple of scoreless innings. Gave him just one hit and one walk as he finished that ball game. This is his fifth appearance with the Rangers. He has no decisions, a 2.84 ERA. Six and a third innings of work. He's walked three, struck out five. Ackerfelds at Oklahoma City this year. Spot starter and reliever for the 89ers. Five and five with a 3.33 ERA. He worked 108 innings down a triple-A ball. So it is 4-0 Athletics. Jamie Moyer worked an inning plus, giving up all four runs, three of them earned. He still is responsible for Ricky Henderson out at second base. Moyer gave up six hits with no walks or strikeouts. And Ackersfelds will face Dave Henderson. If you're scoring with us, Ricky Henderson gets an RBI double for that shot to left center a moment ago. Enrique in behind the runner, and they've got him. Ricky Henderson is out at second base. He evidently didn't know Manrique was near the bag because Ricky was very slow in reacting. Henderson looked like he was really trying to build that lead up. See if he could steal on the first pitch against Ackerfelds. And his concentration was on the pitcher. So you're right, Bob. He did not know how close to the bag Manrique was. He was not able to glance over at the second baseman. Uh, he was really in no man's land out there. Ackerfelds now off the windup and Henderson fouls it. Daryl Ackerfelds is a power pitcher. Good fastball. He'll throw a knuckle curve and throw a split finger pitch as a changeup. Early in the season, Steve mentioned he had a variety of roles at Oklahoma City. He was the right-handed closer early. Had four saves in the early going for the 89ers of Jim Scalen. And talking to some of the catchers in the Ranger organization, Chad Cruder describing Ackerfelds. Gino Petrolli at that time of the year when he first came up, they said he throws a very heavy ball, throws a big hard slider. Not as heavy as Kevin Brown's sinker, but the catcher's arm will feel it. 
And this guy is throwing the ball well. Mike Stanley handling him tonight. There's the fastball up. Henderson got her on late and fouled it out of play. So the line is complete on Moyer with that runner being nailed at second. One plus innings, four runs, three earned. And the other numbers that Steve gave you. Felds on two and two, way outside. Dave Henderson, three hits in his last four trips in this series, a single and homer in two of his last three trips last night, and a double here, first time up tonight. And he gets it down low. Henderson strikes out. Two outs in the inning. Ackerfeld's going right back at Henderson. A pretty good sinking fastball. Henderson pretty late with that swing, so he must not have picked the ball up very well against Ackersfield. Jose Canseco, the hitter. He'll be facing a different kind of pitcher this time up. He got a high one from Moyer and drove it way out of here, down the left field line. An inning ago. Inside comes Darrell. So now in 63 games this year, not quite 63 games, with this swing, Canseco reaches 17 homers and 55 RBIs. And he was ripping again, but popped it up right side. Palmero waiting for it. Rafael has it. But the A's pick up another run on the Weiss single, the Henderson double. Ricky was picked off, so nobody left on. But after two... Coca-Cola Bottling Company of North Texas. Coca-Cola Classic. Can't beat the feeling. Jays are trying to get their magic number down to three. They lead 5-1 in the ninth at Detroit. Yankees beat Boston. Minnesota leading at Chicago. Baltimore trying to keep pace. A game back of Toronto. Up by three in the seventh. Early it's Cleveland at Seattle. Kansas City at California. Scoreless. Top of the third, Mike Stanley hitting for the Rangers. He's the number seven man in the lineup. Mike Moore really has them swinging at air tonight. He's from Eakley, Oklahoma. Mike Moore is. Good fastball down low. Stanley couldn't reach it. Mike hitting 236 with a homer, 10 RBIs. Ranger catcher, one hit in his last nine at-bats. Inside target. Pitches down low. The population of Eakley, Oklahoma, goes down every year when the Moore family leaves for baseball. Population 250. And then a few of them depart. One ball, two strikes. Stanley swinging at a pitch in the dirt, but he got a piece of it. Dale Ford will check it out, rub it off. Steinbach will put it back in play. And foul outside third. two strikes Mike Stanley followed by Jeff Kunkel and Steve Bouchelle in this third inning Rangers without a hit so far they went five innings before getting a safety in the ball game last night and Stanley hits one right below our broadcast position here the A's are televising locally tonight hoping to catch the clincher on local TV so we're with members of the press over around the first base side a bit we get a different perspective on things this evening. 
Stanley reaching. One ball, two strikes. We get to sit up here and we're right around the end, uh, just to the right of that banner there. That's the Spanish radio booth. We were right up in that area. Oh, there we are. First base side. Here's the one two. Stanley fouls it right side. This is an interesting ballpark when you sit even with first base you're further away from the field than in any stadium in America. If you sit in the upper deck on either the first or third base side you might remember this if you ever come out here bring your binoculars. It's a long way. Here's the one two pitch. Fastball up and in. Mike Moore has been a durable performer for Tony La Russa this year. He's gone the distance six times with three shutouts in his 34 starts to date. Up the middle, it'll get through, and the Rangers have their first hit. Mike Stanley battled with two strikes, kept making contact, and then reaching again, took the ball straight back from where it came. Well, it was exactly that, Bob, a real good battle between Stanley and Moore. Not a bad pitch by Mike Moore down and away but Mike Stanley of course has good plate coverage to the outside so he was able to make solid contact on the pitch at the outer part of the plate and drive it back through the wickets of Mike Moore. Jeff Kunkel the hitter. Second inning the Rangers have put their leadoff man aboard an error on a ball hit by Sierra did it last time. Jeff hitting at 269. He said eight homers with 28 runs batted in. Two for his last 13. And he hits it hard to right field. A run for Canseco near the line and he grabs it. Back to first goes Mike Stanley. One out. The big guy's covering some ground in this series. Well, he does that. Update that game for you from Detroit, Bob. That's a final now. Toronto has defeated Detroit by an eight to one count. So their magic number is reduced to three. And in the eighth inning now in Milwaukee, Baltimore is still shutting out the Brewers three nothing. There's that final we told you about Kansas City and California underway in scoreless. Steve Bouchelle hitting a 235 with 16 homers and 58 RBIs. If Baltimore holds on to win, they now lead 4 0. They've added a run at Milwaukee. It'll set up an interesting weekend. If they go in down by a game, Bouchelle rifles one. Look at the play by Gallego, and it's a double play. Gallego on the ground backhands the ball high up in the air and then it was an easy pivot for Weiss who had plenty of time second twin killing for the A's and it's four nothing after two and a half Win seven two at Montreal Pirates keep killing the Cardinals Doug Drabeck shuts out Joe McGrain one nothing Phillies win at New York they're tied at Houston Braves there in the seventh early on the coast Reds and Padres scoreless and the Dodgers again have a run and they lead the Giants one nothing L.A. seems determined not to let San Francisco celebrate at Dodger Stadium so that heated rivalry even though these ball games don't mean much in that respect still emotional down at Dodger Stadium and Mike Gallego Steve what a play doesn't get much better than that Bob and you know you look at the A's pitching staff yes they have great arms but they have had defense like that for the last couple of years to back them up too so it's a pretty good combination and we talked last night about Gallego and Phillips and Weiss of course the, the little guys in the lineup but they are so very valuable in many many ways two and zero oh to Mark McGuire who doubled his first time later scored and Daryl Ackerfeld is throwing the ball well it's two and one Ackerfeld's came on picked off Ricky Henderson struck out Dave Henderson and popped up Jose Canseco. It doesn't get much better than that either. 
Daryl is from Denver, lives in Littleton, a suburb of that Colorado city. And McGuire skies one high to left center. SB in, in Cavillia over. And Cecil calls Pete off the ball as he should. Let's pause five seconds for station identification on the Texas right. Rangers Baseball Catcher, Network. Terry. You're watching Texas Rangers Baseball on KTVT Channel 11. Fort Worth, Dallas, your free TV station. With our skipper at the controls, Dave Burchett and Steve Busby alongside Bob Carpenter at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. 4 nothing A's, bottom of the third, and you're looking at Terry Steinbach. Breaking ball in the dirt. Steinbach reaching on that error. And we put that in quotation marks by Steve Bouchel in the first inning. They should have been given to Palmero for not catching Steve's long throw. But it did result in an unearned run being scored in that inning. Who will Matt Young give this souvenir to? <laughs> He's looking over the crowd. He'll go seven or eight rows deep. There's the one one. Two balls and a strike. was the pitch and to the shortstop Jeff Kunkel guns out Steinbach two down five in a row retired by Ackerfelds Darrell was on the 40 man roster heading into spring training fingers had a lot of right handers in camp down in Port Charlotte he was basically a victim of the numbers game but they likes the way they like the way he throws it Steve he's He's a guy you look down the line. Of course, Jeff Russell appears to be the closer here for years to come. But this guy is a big, hard-throwing right-hander as well. We'll have to find a role for him because he seems suited to being a closer. Well, Darrell got caught in a kind of a number struggle, I guess, with Brad Arnsberg and Kevin Brown for that middle release spot, long release spot, and, and spot starter. And, of course, uh, Kevin Brown ended up winning that job and having an outstanding year. Breaking ball low and two to Parker who popped up to the right side his first time up. Dave with 21 homers 95 batted in. And he went around I think. Yes he did. John Hirschbeck says see you later. It's a one two three inning six in a row for Ackerfeld. He's fan two and after three A's lead the Rangers for nothing. On September 27, 1928, the A's Lefty Grove fanned the White Sox in the seventh inning with just nine pitches. Welcome back to the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. Big crowd on hand, hoping their A's can clinch tonight. They're off to a good start, leading for nothing after three. Rangers have sent the minimum up tonight, and tomorrow afternoon, a day game we will not televise, but we will be with you from Anaheim Friday night. That will be Bobby Witt against Mike Witt. Top of the fourth, SP Manrique and Palmero, and here's Steve Busby. All right, Bob, thank you. Top of the order, SP flied to right field as he started the game, and first ball swinging here. Fouls went off third base side in pursuit is Tony Phillips, but it's about three rows deep. Four runs on six hits for the Athletics. No runs on just one hit, and Mike Stanley lead off single in the third inning. For the Rangers, both ball clubs have committed an error. A scoring three times in the first and one time in the second. Amy Moyer, who started for the Rangers out of the ball game after working one inning plus. <laughs> Mike Moore, starting into his windup, knocked his hat backwards, so he decided to stop. And I'm sure that Cecil Espy was glad he did. That thing might have fallen down over his eyes just as he was ready to deliver the pitch. 0 and 2 as Espy fouls it off. Talk about a new lease on life, Steve. In seven years, Mike Moore was 65 and 96 with an ERA of almost four and a half and only two shutouts. This year, he's had a chance to win 19 games. He's already thrown three shutouts, and he, at times this year, has been the ERA leader in the American League. The big right-hander back with the 0-2 pitch. It's in the dirt to SB. 
You know, Mike Moore, of course, struggling up there in Seattle. And it has to be difficult. That's not the easiest park to pitch in in the American League. Probably the most difficult pitcher's park. Coming to one of the best, if not the best, pitcher's parks here in Oakland. And an obvious difference in team. <laughs> A little more consistent offensively, defensively. One-two pitch. Got him swinging. Like Mike Moore came back with that split-fingered pitch, and Espy is gone. That is strikeout number two for the A's right-hander. Watch the downward movement. Straight down, a little bit away from the left-hander. So Espy gone. Now Fred Manrique, who grounded out to the right side. 0 for 1 this evening. Manrique hitting at 301. First ball swing up the ladder goes Gallego. Not only up the ladder but reaching back to his left to spear that hot shot from Fred Manrique. He's got a radar glove tonight doesn't he. Everything is attracted to him. He timed his leak perfectly. Now Rafael Palmero. And he takes a ball down low. Palmero grounded right back to Moore. That ended things in the first inning. Well, the Athletics have just done everything right here this evening and for most of the year. You know, earlier we talked about Gallego possibly playing shortstop in postseason play over at third base. Tony Phillips is probably figuring, hey, the way he's playing at second, I might be the guy out now <laughs> when Carney Lansford is back from those sore ribs of his. 1-1 one, one pitch to Palmero. One and two. Now those three guys, uh, they have just done an outstanding job. You know, Walt Weiss was out 60 plus ball games this year. Gallego filled in more than admirably. Chopper to the right side will end things here as Gallego feeds on to McGuire. So the side retired one, two, three fashion. Rangers gone in the fourth. Athletics coming up. They lead by four. Phillips 66. You want more muscle in your car? Pump up to Super Clean Premium Unleaded. Performance power from Phillips 66. Bottom of the fourth coming up. It will be the bottom third of the Athletics batting order. Phillips, Gallego, and Wise to face Daryl Ackerfeld. Ackerfeld has retired all five hitters he has faced, plus a pickoff of Ricky Henderson as he came in to replace Jamie Moyer. Henderson at second base, and Ackerfeld just turned around and nailed him right there. Tony Phillips an RBI single back in the first inning. Phillips now 47 RBIs on the year takes a pitch inside ball one. They're now in the ninth inning in Milwaukee four nothing Baltimore. Orioles trying to keep pace with Toronto who won earlier eight to one over Detroit. Kansas City has scored a run in the second inning in California. Phillips fouls one straight back and out of play and will. Make the count a ball and a strike. Tony Phillips, a switch hitter. 267 is average overall, 259 as a right hander. That's the where he got his base hit. Phillips from the left side this season, hitting at 269. Ackerfeld's back to him. Good pitch to the inside corner, one and two. Tony Phillips, like Mike Gallego, able to play the infield positions all the way around. Pulls this one to the right side, up with it, Manrique. On to Palmero, one gone. Fred Manrique takes care of that Long ground ball and, and Mike Gallego American. will stand in there. Gallego popped out to Manrique his first time. Gallego a 252 hitter. Three home runs 30 RBIs on the year. Talking about him filling in for Walt Weiss during Weiss's absence. Tony La Russa, I thought summed it up pretty well Bobby you were mentioning that Gallego would might start in the, in the playoffs in place of Weiss at shortstop and Larusa said hey 
whoever plays best plays most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that being a barrister, as Tony is, he decided, he has to decide between Walt Weiss and Mike Gallego, and that's his very simple logic. It's not a luxury that every manager possesses no. either. Exactly. With this kind of personnel. Ackerfeld's with the 0-1 pitch. Big breaking ball in the dirt. That swung on and missed by Gallego. It's 0-2. They have now gone to the third down the coast. Still 1-0. Kansas City over California. Kansas City needing a loss by the Athletics tonight. And to win themselves to stay alive in the AL West. California last night with their loss was eliminated. And Gallego loses his bat down toward third base coach Rene Latchman. He strikes out and Latchman retrieves the bat. Strikeout number three for Daryl Ackerfeld. You know, that reacted like a split finger pitch, but from his grip, it looked like a knuckle curve. From our center field camera, it looked like his knuckles were way up off that ball, so it appeared to be the hard knuckle curve that Ackerfeld throws, and man, it had some dip on it. Now Walt Weiss did, or he takes up high ball one. Weiss singled and scored. That back in the second inning. So Weiss now hitting a 239. Had some offensive problems and defensive problems since his return to the A's. Last year's rookie of the year, he takes outside now. It's two balls and no strikes. Check that one and one. There's a knuckle curve that goes in the dirt. Two and one now, the count to Walt Weiss. Weiss this year, four out of 12 against Ranger pitching. Pops this one up foul territory, and there's plenty of it on the third base side. Bouchelle and Cuckerman pursued, and Steve Bouchelle hauls it in. So another one, two, three inning. And Ackerfeld now has retired the last eight hitters he has faced. Will go to the fifth inning. Still 4-0 Oakland. Strikeouts in the first four frames. Faced ten batters. Gave up four runs on six hits to Jamie Moyer. That and the only one and two hitters, one inning and two hitters worth of work. And Jose Canseco added to his misery by... Jolting his 17th home run, a two-run shot in the first inning for Oakland. So we go to the fifth, and Ruben Sierra will start things off. Ruben on via an error his first time up. He was erased by a double play ground ball, one of two that the A's have turned tonight. Ruben hitting a 305. Mike Moore to work here. Off-speed pitch up the middle. Gallego to his right. A leap and a throw, and he got him. I don't know what else Mike Gallego can do tonight. Well, get a hit maybe. He's 0 for 2. <laughs> but he's taken a couple of hits away from the Rangers. Here's another one. Backhand. Remember, there's a quick runner going to first base. Look at the margin he gets Sierra by. Ruben out by a good two steps. A one gone to Harold Baines, who was a strikeout victim back in the second. And Baines' first ball swing. He hits it sharply to left field. Ricky Henderson going back and makes the catch. People talked a lot about Henderson after the acquisition from the Yankees by the Athletics, and they were talking about his offense. And Tony LaRusso reminded him, hey, this guy is a pretty good defensive left fielder. So that's one of the main reasons we really needed him. Great stroke by Harold Baines, low and outside pitch, driven to left center. Ricky Henderson with the burners on, got there in plenty of time to make it look easy. And just like that, a couple of very good defensive plays by Oakland. The Rangers have two outs here in the fifth, and Pete Incaviglia is standing in. Inky grounded into a 1-4-3 double play that ended things in the second. Ball one. Reminds me of a headline we saw Monday morning coming out here in the San Francisco papers. 
It said the look of a champion. They were talking about the 49ers coming from behind to win on Sunday. The Oakland Athletics are playing like a championship team here tonight. Yes, they are. A ball and a strike to Ingevillia. Well, they, they have the necessary ingredients for consistency, and that is very good pitching and solid defense. Plus an offensive uh, team that can really explode against you. A ball and two strikes to count to Ingevillia. Moore and Steinbach together on the signs. And the pitch just outside, two and two. And in Camellia gets a piece of that more fastball. Still two and two. In Camellia trying to prolong things here in the fifth inning. Inky getting it the number six slot ahead of Mike Stanley Stanley with the only base hit tonight for Texas once again the 2 2 pitch got him swinging Mike Moore with his third strikeout sends the Rangers down in order again in the fifth so we finished half this contest the Oakland Athletics on top of the Texas Rangers by four we go to the bottom of the fifth inning here in Oakland. It will be the top of the athletics order. Ricky Henderson will start things off. Then Dave Henderson and Jose Canseco. Ricky Henderson, one out of two with an RBI double in the second inning. Well, Henderson now with 57 RBIs on the year. First time that he has faced Daryl Ackerfelds and the fastball right down through there, strike one. For Ricky Henderson, this is game number 83 in the Nays uniform this year. He's driven in now 35. And he's hitting it 298 as an A. On base percentage, though, so critical for him. He's up now at a 426 on the on his tenure with the Athletics. That fastball just outside. It's a ball and two strikes. Ackerfeld has really been impressive. He has not allowed a base runner since coming on. He has retired nine eight straight hitters. He pick off Henderson the ninth. He has struck out three over that span. Jeff Kunkel gobbles up that ground ball. High throw is by Palmero and into the Ranger dugout. So down to second base goes Henderson. That will be an error on Jeff Kunkel. Not much you can say about this one other than routine play. No chance for Palmero. Well, that ball just started high and kept getting higher as it went over Raphael's head. Well, Jeff Gunkel committing the second error of the night for the Rangers. And now Henderson. Ricky at second base and Dave at the plate. A little conference between Mike Stanley and Daryl Ackerfels. First time they've had to worry tonight about going through a series of signs. Now check that the first time that Ackerfels came on, Ricky Henderson was at second base, but he was immediately picked off. Jeff Kunkel going in right behind him. They're going to appeal to first base to see if Ricky Henderson might have missed first base and. Dale Ford, the first base umpire, said no, he got it. This is the only thing that missed first base. The ball. <laughs> he stepped any more in the middle of that bag. I don't know how he could have done it. Dave Anderson lost a fly ball down the right field line, is twisting toward the Ranger bullpen and over it out into the seats. Dave Henderson, the big home run producer of this series, he has hit two, two two run shots. Last night's proved to be the game winner.
have a final for you now from Milwaukee where the Orioles have shut out the Brewers for nothing so they keep pace with the Toronto Blue Jays breaking ball high over the head of Dave Henderson Ricky going to third there will be no throw Mike Stanley got quite a bit of leather on it able to slow it down but it bounded far enough away that Ricky Henderson able to advance to third Looked like a knuckle curve that got away They've called it a wild pitch. And Henderson pausing then easily to third base. Now the Ranger infield will come in. By the way, in that Baltimore shutout of Milwaukee, Bob Malacki won his 14th ball game. And what we could tell on the scoreboard looked like he might have had some help from Greg Olson also. Pitch to Henderson, good high fastball, swung on a miss. It's one and two. And nobody out here in the fifth inning. Ricky Henderson over to third base. Dave Henderson at the plate in the Ranger infield, drawn way in. Ackerfeld's working from the stretch, and Henderson fouls it off first base side. It's the same situation last night that. Dave Henderson came up and hit that two run home run Ricky Henderson the batter preceding him had grounded out to shortstop with the infield drawn in Walt Weiss was the runner at third base but then Dave Henderson said he came up made an adjustment choked up on the bat just a little bit and able to walk that fly ball out of here chopped down the third base side it's foul still a ball and two strikes. Dave Henderson a guy kind of like Don Baylor was for a few years running he has been with winners the last several years with Oakland of course last year and this year San Francisco prior to that Boston prior to that when you get compliments from guys like Dave Parker about being a money player that's saying something and Parker is very admiring of this right handed hitter. Dave Parker should know. Did he check his swing in time? First base umpire Dale Ford shaking his head down there, indicating there was no swing. So it's two and two. And all Dave Parker has to do to get another look at that check swing. And that's pretty far out there. All Dave Parker has to do though is look in the mirror to see one of the best money players in baseball. He got pretty enthused last night, didn't he? Has to be a big mirror, too. Popped up. Foul. First base side over to take a look is Mike Stanley, but that's seven or eight rows back. I think the funniest story I ever heard about Dave Parker was when he was with the Pirates during those great years they had, and he'd walk around the clubhouse with a towel on, flexing his muscles, and just walking around in front of every locker saying to the writers, they ought to pay me just for walking around here. <laughs> Such an imposing presence and a clubhouse leader with some good teams in Pittsburgh, some good teams in Cincinnati. And he learned from a good man over there in Pittsburgh, too. Pops, Willie Stargell. Yeah. Two and two, the count to Dave Henderson. Ricky down at third base. And Ackerfeld to the stretch. Got him swinging on a high fastball. Darrell Ackerfeld's reaching back, getting a little bit extra. About shoulder high, and Dave Henderson not able to make contact. Second time he's fanned this hitter. There's some of the high heat, that extra dimension of velocity that Ackerfeld has that suited him to be a closer early in the season in Oklahoma City. He's the kind of guy that can have a runner at third base and nobody out, come in and blow a few people away and get out of the jam. A challenge here, though. Now they're not going to take that challenge. They will intentionally walk Jose Canseco. So Bob Valentine said no. So I hit one 459 feet his first time up. We'll take our chances with Mark McGuire. With the double play in order and the fact that McGuire has been slumping this year. It's been all power or nothing for Mark who's hit into a lot of double plays. In fact very close to an Oakland record of double plays grounded into in a season. And a low batting mark of 225. So the fourth wide one will send Canseco to first base. Now the middle of the Ranger infield will drop back into double play position for McGuire. 
McGuire one out of two tonight. He doubled and scored in the first inning and then flied out to left field. That was the first time that he had faced Darrell Ackerfeld. McGuire with 31 home runs, 91 RBIs on the year. And we're going to get some more action now in the Ranger bullpen. Tommy Valentine getting Drew Hall up and loosening. Well, Bob Valentine not keeping any of the stops in place. He's pulling them out, trying to keep this ball game close, give his offense an opportunity to see if they can solve Mike Moore here tonight. That ball is hit high and reasonably deep to center field. It's playable for Espy. Tagging a third is Ricky Henderson. A catch is made, and Espy's throw not nearly in time. So Mark McGuire gets the sacrifice fly, and the A's had their fifth run. Cecil played it well, made a strong throw home, but no chance at all. It'll be an unearned run. Henderson will let off the inning with an error reaching base. McGuire looking for the fly ball, got the pitch up that he needed, and he watched it for an RBI, his 92nd of the year. Ricky about half speed coming into home. He knew he had plenty of time. That ball about 360 feet or so to center field. Well, Ackerfeld's now with Conseco, a running threat at first base. Remember Jose, the first player last year to break the 40 home run, 40 stolen base category. He created a new one. Gary Steinbach is 0 for 2 tonight. Ackerfeld's again working to first. Steinbach has been on via an error. He's also grounded the shortstop. I think as Jose Canseco's career goes on, you have to kind of forget about that 40-40 club and run very selectively. This is a kind of a big guy. You don't want up and down the base paths all the time. Right here you have a five-run lead. You're about five days away from postseason play, and it would be a pretty gutsy move to have him running in a situation like this when so many bad things can happen to you. Well, Canseco has definitely cut down his stolen base attempts in the 63 ball games. Now that he has played since returning to the lineup, he has attempted nine steals and he has been successful on six. Steinbach lines one to left. That'll be a base hit. Canseco checks in at second base as Incavilia gets the ball back in. Well, Gary Steinbach joins the hit parade with his first of the night. The Athletics now have seven on the evening. And runners at first and second for Dave Parker as Bobby Valentine ponders a possible move here with the left-hander in the bullpen. He probably is wondering if Ackerfeld's is tiring. Darrell, of course, pitched a good number of innings at Oklahoma City, 108. But since coming to the Rangers, just it has not seen that much game action. Coming into this three-plus inning outing tonight, he had only thrown six and a third innings over quite a while. So even a big, strong guy like Ackerfeld, who goes 6'2", 210, a former football player at Arkansas, tires out a little bit. And he's become hittable a bit here in the fifth inning in his fourth inning of work. Well, Bobby Valentine to the mound. He has Drew Hall in the bullpen talking with his young right-hander. And he's going to stick with it. Well, he will let Ackerfels face the left-handed hitting Dave Parker with runners at first and second and two gone. Pretty good confidence sign here by the skipper to face Parker. Right-hander against left-hander, one big swing, and in the fifth inning, this ball game might be over if he drives home a couple or hits one out. But Bobby Valentine wants to find something out about Ackerfelds here. And he will get a supreme test. Dave Parker, of course, we were talking about being a money player. When he has people out on the bases, he becomes extremely tough. Parker hitting a 268 on the year. But with runners on, Dave Parker becomes a 295 hitter. First pitch all the way to the backstop off the glove of Mike Stanley. Down to third base with a big turn goes Conseco and into second. Will go Terry Steinbach. That pitch just shooting by Mike Stanley all the way to the screen. Looks like the hard slider that stayed up and it broke just enough in on the left-handed hitter that got it off the web of Stanley's glove and Mike has been charged with a pass ball. 
So a wild pitch in the inning. Now a pass ball. Runners advance 90 feet, and they will not bother with Dave Parker. They're going to go ahead and intentionally walk him, and with the second intentional walk of this inning. Canseco was intentionally passed to get to McGuire, who got the sacrifice fly. And now with first base open and a couple aboard, Parker will be walked to get to Tony Phillips. And there's ball four. So the base is full for Phillips. Second walk given up by Ackerfeld. Bobby Valentine would like his right-hander to get this one more out of the inning, prevent any further damage. It's 5-0 Oakland. Mike Moore on the mound for Oakland has looked anything but touchable. California has come back with a couple of runs in the fourth inning at home against Kansas City. It's now the Royals 3-2 over the Angels. Tony Phillips tonight, an RBI single in the first. He grounded out to second, that in the fourth inning. Ackerfelds with the bases loaded and two outs deals to Phillips, who really bangs one to right field, but he hooked it about 40 feet foul. Tony Phillips up there looking fastball on the first pitch. He got it. A little over anxious. These little guys on the Oakland team muscle up occasionally. Phillips has four. Mike Gallego, three. Walt Weiss has three. They're just good hitters who make contact, and once in a while they get one in the air and it goes out. But they're not liable to strike out with men on base. They put the ball in play. 0-1, the count to Phillips. Steinbach looking in as he gets his lead away from second. Ackerfeld back to Phillips. And a fly ball to left center should end it. In Kavili and Espy, Cecil calling for it and puts it away. Side retire. The A's come up with a run. It's unearned. They had a base hit, a couple of walks, and leave three stranded. They've left five in the ball game. We finish five from the Coliseum. Before we go to the sixth inning, it's time now for our Memorex trivia question. Memorex audio and video products. Is it live or is it Memorex? Tonight's question, how many minor league teams do the Texas Rangers have? Minor league system, of course, it has been significantly reduced since the draft came into being and expenses went up. A lot of ball clubs cutting back for the Rangers. The question tonight, Memorex would like you to name the number of teams they have in their minor league system. I'll give you half an inning and come back with the answer before we go to the bottom of the sixth. Mike Stanley will start things off here in the top of the sixth for the Rangers. Mike Moore has faced the minimum tonight. Five innings. He has faced just 15. A couple of double plays have helped him out. Mike Stanley has the only base hit this evening off the big right hander. And Stanley shoots one down the right field line and well back into the stands for strike one. Stanley hitting a 243. Getting a lot of activity behind the plate in his last few weeks of 1989. Bobby Valentine said he would like to see more of Mike Stanley, and he is certainly seeing a lot of him in the month of September. Bobby and the Rangers, of course, without Gino Petralli and Jim Sunberg. Sonny announcing his retirement, not making this final road trip. Gino Petralli giving way to that knee and just resting it for the rest of the season. And Mike Stanley is thrown out by Walt Weiss for the first out here in the sixth. You know, that looked like a pretty routine play. But Walt Weiss struggled a bit to get that ball to first oh, base. Man, this is some of the yeah, tentativeness they're talking about. See a little extra couple of steps there, and then finally he fires it. Evidently, Walter was checking the runner and knew how much time he had, but the, the only rap I've heard on him coming back from the injury is that because of the knee, the timing is just a little bit different there at shortstop, and he's a little more tentative than he was as the rookie of the year, and then, of course, this year before he hurt the knee. And they think we'll see the real Walter Weiss again in 1990 when he has 
the full time to rest up over the winter and have a full correct type of spring training. Jeff Kunkel to play it has a count of one ball and one strike to him. Kunkel tonight is flying to right field. Moore back to the plate. And a check swing on a pitch inside. It's two and one. Kunkel hitting a 268 on the year. He has driven in 28, eight home runs to go along with those 28 RBIs. And he hammers one to center, but Dave Henderson has plenty of room out there this evening and puts it away for out number two. Well, that's now nine consecutive hitters. Make that ten consecutive hitters. Sent down by Mike Moore. Steve Bouchelle will try to get the Ranger offense going here in the sixth. Bouchelle granted into a double play, 4-6-3, but not a very routine one. Mike Gallego, the second baseman, starting it by making a fine diving stop of Bouchelle's hard ground ball and making a quick throw to Walt Weiss, who had an easy time from that point, turning two. Moore back with a 1-0 pitch. A strike to the outside corner. Boo trying to break an 0 for 11 slump that he's in. And he's one for his last 27. Fouls this one back just below us. Now he's down on the count of ball and two strikes. His 234 batting average for Steve Bouchel, the lowest since way back on the 5th of July. Two and two the count. A little early for Santa Claus. But they're looking for a gift here tonight. Yeah, I think he has a divisional title in that set. Yes, sack. sir. Looking for a chimney. <laughs> Moore with a 2-2 two -two pitch. Walt Weiss. Double pumps and the side retired in one, two, three fashion. Rangers gone again here in the sixth, and we'll go to the bottom half. The Athletics by five. Well, half inning ago, Memorex brought you tonight's trivia question. That question was, how many minor league teams do the Texas Rangers have? The answer, six. Oklahoma City, their triple-A team, and of course, Tulsa, their double-A team. Two teams at Port Charlotte, an A-league team and a rookie league team, and also an A-league team at Gastonia and a rookie league team at Butte. The trivia question tonight has been presented by Memorex Audio Tape, available at Tom Thumb stores. As we go to the bottom of the sixth inning, Bobby Valentine has gone to his bullpen. Daryl Ackerfeld's finished for the evening after working four very good innings, allowing an unearned run on one base hit with a couple of walks and four strikeouts, and Craig McMurtry to the hill. Last time Craig pitched was six days ago against Seattle on the homestand. Mac on the year. No record, eight and a half the ERA in 18 games, covering 20 innings, 29 hits and 19 runs, 11 Ks and 12 walks, and he was hit around a bit by the Mariners. Four hits, two runs with a strikeout in two innings of work. First hitter to face McMurtry tonight, Mike Gallego, who is 0 for 2. He takes a pitch down and away for ball one. Gallego has popped out and struck out. The pop out came against Jamie Moyer and the strikeout against Daryl Ackerfelds. Sky down the right field line, foul territory, Palmero and Sierra in pursuit. Palmero makes a great catch and then drops the ball as he hit the bullpen mound. Rafael Palmero going up the slope of the mound, got the ball in the palm of his glove, and then on the down slope, crashed to the ground and the ball popped loose. This was a great play by Palmero. He really accelerated here at the end, right there and had it when diving. Unfortunately, in baseball, the ground can cause a fumble, yeah. unlike football. And when he couldn't hold on, it was ruled safe by the umpire. What an effort by Rafael Palmero. Well, that is tough. That's a tough play for Palmero because he's concentrating on the ball, watching it. That's a difficult play without that mound there, making a play with your back to home plate. 
Now Gallego lofts a fly ball to left field. Pete in Cadelia calling for the fair catch. Puts it away. And there's one gone. Pretty good job by Darrell Ackerfelds tonight. An unearned run over four innings. Uh -huh. Only gave a hit. Walked Four's two, both intentional. Oh, nice. And the four strikeouts. Pretty strong outing. Helping his case late here in the season. You know, we have seen some very good middle and long relief uh, on our recent telecast from Ranger pitchers. Brad Arnsberg that comes to mind, of course, for the job he did in Milwaukee. And here tonight, Daryl Ackerfeld is really doing a, an unsung uh, job as far as the credit they get. But, you know, you come in and stop a ball club like Oakland or Milwaukee or anyone when they have scored often and early, give your ball club a chance to get back in it. That's a, a very critical part of a pitching staff today. 0-2, the count to Walt Weiss. Weiss one out of two tonight with a single and a run scored. McMurtry back to the plate. A one and two. So much emphasis, Bob, I think today is put on the closers that you tend to overlook the guys that if the starters struggle early, like a Craig McMurtry or a Daryl Ackerfelds or Brad Arnsberg, that come in and keep things under control or restore order. And keep him under control. Weiss is gone. That is strikeout number one for Mack. Well, you look at the four innings that Ackerfeld's used to stop the Oakland attack. You take away the unearned run because of an error, and it would conceivably be, be a four-nothing ball game. Well, if your ball club just picks up one run every other inning over the time he pitches, suddenly it's still the middle of the ball game, and you're down only four to two or five to two, and uh, he's done his job and. The offense has it back in the game. Tonight, the Rangers haven't been able to get the offense going against Mike Moore, but that kind of brings into focus the importance of that mop-up role, if you will, or the long relief man, because if he does the job, your team can chip away and get back before it gets too late. Ricky Henderson, the hitter. Henderson tonight, one for three, although he has an RBI, and he has scored a run. And the pitch from McMurtry is upstairs, two balls and no strikes. Ricky Henderson, a 275 hitter this year. Looks at a pitch down low from McMurtry. Three balls and no strikes. So Henderson with two outs trying to get aboard. Dave Henderson, the number two hitter in the order, is in the on deck circle. And a strike. Mercury to Henderson and another strike this one to the outer part of the plate so it's a full count Ricky Henderson giving himself a little talking to trying to psych himself up as he faces his payoff pitch from McMurtry breaking ball is outside and Henderson aboard with the walk that is the first unintentional walk issued by a Ranger pitcher here this evening. The ballgame. Center fielder, Dave Henderson. Dave Henderson, one for three. He has struck out twice, but in the first inning, he doubled and scored. Doubled ahead of Jose Canseco, who blasted a two-run home run. Ball one. Mercury checking Henderson at first base. Facing Henderson at the plate. And Dave takes a strike. It's a ball and a strike. Dave Henderson, a 251 hitter, but it has been a pretty potent 251. He has driven in 79. And he has 15 home runs. Big breaking ball just missed. It's two and one. Last year, Dave Henderson hit 304 with this Oakland ball club, driving in 94 with 24 home runs. So this year's numbers not quite up to last, but still a pretty good year for a guy who contributes with the glove also. A little snap throw to first and Ricky Henderson back.
McMurtry with a 2-1 pitch. Three and one the count. Well, McMurtry now working himself into a bit of a jam. He walked Ricky Henderson. Now is falling behind to Dave Henderson, three and one, and awaiting in the on deck circle if he gets an opportunity here. Jose Canseco. Big swing, and we have a 3 2 count. So Ricky Henderson at first will be off with the pitch. First base coach Dave McKay over there just to remind him. And with a right handed hitter up there, Rafael Palmero will remain at first base to hold the bag against Ricky Henderson. Call strike three. Fastball to the outside corner. McMurtry gets his second strikeout. So the A's are thwarted in the sixth inning. No runs, no hits. They strand one. They've got six in the game. And after six, still 5 nothing A's. They're still trying to find a solution to Mike Moore here. Moore has only given up one base hit. He's faced the minimum through six innings. And, well, he has been tough. And I, I think this really points out, Bob, how an important an addition Mike Moore has been to this Oakland staff. Well, we're seeing some of the dimensions of the Oakland ball club tonight, Steve. We've seen the power. We've seen the defense. We've seen the pitching. The only thing we haven't seen that really hasn't been necessary is the speed yeah. that can make things happen. But uh, the Oakland Athletics all around looking very good tonight. And the Rangers have a lot of work to do to try to get back into this one. Oakland trying to wrap up the American League West with a victory here tonight. And Rangers trying to put a stop to it. See Celeste to start things off in the seventh inning. Rangers facing Mike Moore and back with the play by play. Not Batman, but Bob Carpenter. <laughs> Holy playoffs, Robin. Yeah. Down low it is to see Celeste leading off 0 for 2. SBS fly to right and fanned and we'd like to thank Rayma London Price a nice lady who's from Denison Texas living out here in the Oakland area now who stopped by the broadcast booth tonight and to all of our surprise delivered a wonderful cake to the broadcast crew. You spilled a little frosting on your tie too. No I didn't have any of that. <laughs> the crew is on a sugar high up here though. Yeah. SBO for two and Moore delivers a fastball up high and it's three and oh yeah that's what the Rangers need base runners they've had two tonight each erased in double plays SB hitting ahead of the Rangers second baseman Fred Manrique Mike Moore catches the outside corner with a fastball Moore was an All-American in 81 Sporting News All-American at Oral Roberts University. He was 12 and 2 in college that year. And he doesn't walk people often, but he gives the Rangers a leadoff runner here in the seventh. First base runner since Mike Stanley singled, leading off the third inning. And we'll see how Fred Manrique handles the situation. Moore, of course, is after a shutout tonight, and the Athletics had a weird string this year. Their first seven shutouts of the season were combined shutouts between a starter and a bullpen pitcher. When Mike Moore mm -hmm. shut out mm -hmm. Minnesota mm -hmm. one nothing in July, it was their first shutout by one pitcher going the distance. It was also his first. And as we said earlier, he's gone on to pitch a couple more this season. But Manrique, 0 for 2, hit it hard as last time, was robbed by a leaping Mike Gallego. We owe you a station break. We'll do it after this next delivery. Swing and a foul tip, 0 and 2. Let's pause five seconds for station identification on the Texas Rangers Baseball Network. You're watching Texas Rangers Baseball on KTVT Channel 11. Fort Worth, Dallas, your free TV station. No balls, two strikes to Fred Manrique. Bob Carpenter with Steve Busby, our producer-director Dave Burchett at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, and Manrique fouls one out of play right side. In the Toronto win tonight, Dave Steeb was the winner 17-8, beating Doyle Alexander, a four-hitter for Toronto pitching tonight. Dave Steeb and Tom Hinkey. Baltimore got a six hit shutout from Bob Malacky to beat Jerry Royce and the Brewers. Inside to Manrique. Malacky 14 and 12. Got help from Kevin Hickey, Mark Williamson. Late. 
and they stayed a game back of Toronto. It'll be Jeff Ballard and Todd Stottlemyre Friday at the Sky Dome. On the mound. Two balls and two strikes. And as we told you earlier, Mike Balecki was the winner for the Cubs. They beat Montreal 7-2 to continue the fun they started last night when they clinched the division in the National League East. In the West, the Giants still trail at L.A. 1-0 in the seventh. As the Giants' magic number is uno. And but Cincinnati is leading San Diego by the same score. Good point. And that one may be over before the Giants' game is done. They may be hooping and hollering while trailing in the late innings. But they sure would like to win at L.A. and close it out in that fashion. Two balls and two strikes to Manrique. Rangers down by five. They've been out hit seven to one. Over the head of Dave Oliver and into the bullpen. Red Manrique has done a fine job for the Rangers at several positions since coming over in the trade with Harold Baines from the White Sox. And he went around, couldn't stop his swing. Strikeout number four for Mike Moore. One out. Red Manrique pretty well tied up on that tailing fastball. He saw it, was trying to swing, trying to stop, took strike three. Enrique 0 for 3. Next up, Rafael Palmero. grounded back to the mound in the first to the second baseman in the fourth lately he's six for 17 and over the longer stretch over the last three weeks Rafael has been hitting up around 340 second deck left side 0 and 2 and Bob one of the reasons I think that Rafael had started coming back getting a stroke back he was hitting the ball to all parts of the ballpark going up the middle going the other way very well tonight he has grounded out twice to the right side and I think that pretty well is an indication when he starts doing that the pitcher has a much better chance of getting Paul Merrill out when he starts trying to pull the ball against anyone it's the pitcher's advantage. There's a double play ball should be easy for Weiss. He stayed away from SB, and every time the Rangers get a runner tonight, he dies in a twin killing. It's happened three times. Seventh inning stretch time. The A's are getting closer, leading the Rangers 5-0 after six and a half. And they're getting ready at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum for a celebration a short time from now. Holy smokes. You got enough time to read all that? Folks saluting the Super Ones, our flagship station in Fort Worth, Dallas. Thank you, folks. We appreciate it. The bottom of the seventh is underway, and Jose Canseco ducking back from a high, tight Craig McMurtry fastball. Fouled it off. Jose tonight has homered for two runs, popped up, and been walked intentionally. Murtry got a breaking ball by him. 0 and 2. We're in the eighth inning now at Dodger Stadium. L.A. getting some pitching in that series. Scott Gerelts and Tim Belcher were the starters tonight for San Francisco and L.A. respectively. 
And the Padres continue to trail at home, which could also clinch it for the Giants, even if they lose. Here's the 0-2. Fastball away. Look out. That one just missed the fortunate lady in the yellow sleeves there, middle of your screen, and may have gotten her on the hand. Well, when you're sitting on that side opposite a power hitter, folks, please watch what's going on on the field. There's a big breaking ball fouled. Here's the 0-2 again. Down and away. Canseco misses it badly, and Craig McMurtry has the strikeout touch. He's faced five hitters, walked one, and fanned three. Now between McMurtry and Atropels now, seven strikeouts tonight. Rangers has a ball club now, 1,082 strikeouts on the year. That, of course, leads the major leagues. Here's McGuire. Mark one for two with a double, a run scored, and a sacrifice fly, good for his 92nd RBI. And he's creeping up on Dave Parker, who has 95. And if the season went on for another month, Conseco would be creeping <laughs> up on both of them. Yeah. He has a bunch, 53, and make it 55 in 62 games, including his two-run shot here tonight. That's about 150 a year pace. Oh. Mark McGuire, a big boy out of Southern Cal. He's got a brother that's bigger than he is, who's a quarterback down at San Diego State. After transferring from Iowa, Dan McGuire. And when both of them are home, their food bill looks like the national debt. <laughs> a two-man training table. Hmm. Mark just can't get comfortable in there tonight. He keeps backing off center, and with the count of two and one, he'll get back in there. Off the end of the bat, a cue shot. Wrong way for Manrique, and he literally boots it into foul territory. Rafael Palmero thought Manrique was going to make the play, so he vacated and went to the bag. But I do believe Palmero had a lot less ground to cover to get to that ball than did Fred Manrique, who was playing up the middle. Yeah, where Rafael started, it was only about 10 feet to his right. And, you know, from a pitcher's standpoint, you want your first baseman to take everything that he can, he thinks he can get to and tell the first baseman, hey, you go get the ball, I'll, get, I'll be at the back. Don't worry about it. If you don't get it, the second baseman's behind you. But this made an almost impossible play for Manrique. They have charged him with an error. I think just because of the way it looked after he kicked it. But that's a that's a very tough play for any second baseman. Third error of the night on the Rangers. Rafael Palmero has played a part in two of them and been charged with neither. Terry Steinbach, the hitter. Steinbach, one for three. He's been aboard via an error. Grounded out and singled. Swinging a foul down in the Ranger bullpen. A potential fourth pitcher of the night. Drew Hall is throwing. Steve, if the A's are to be the potent force that we think they will be in postseason play, some lightning out of this guy's bat would be helpful. Not that you can pitch around people, but Steinbach, if he's hitting, makes this an almost impossible lineup to face. Only his slumping makes them tolerable I guess you could say they'll never be easy to retire but if he hits you're in big trouble as the opposing pitcher now it, it does with him not hitting put a hole in their lineup when a left hander is on the mound they back up Steinbach in the lineup with Dave Parker so you have a, a, a slumping Terry Steinbach and then a left handed hitter Dave Parker that's really the only let up that the the athletics provide you in the first seven spots. Right. And then you have to be a left-hander to be able to take advantage of that. Well hit into the seats over the bullpen. And if you get Toronto in the playoffs, you're talking about Jimmy Key from the left side. Mike Flanagan. We've got a couple of good ones. Key the foremost. 
If Baltimore gets in, you're talking a staff with Jeff Ballard, mm -hmm. a lefty, but mostly right-handers. 2-2 two -two count. Well hit to right center. Backing up with room is Ruben Sierra. For the second out, he grabs it. Mark McGuire retreats. And it'll be McMurtry against Dave Parker. So a pretty good outing so far for Mack. He's retired five hitters. He's seen one reach on an error. He's walked one, fanned three. So for the little used and at least in 89, uh, rather unsuccessful Craig McMurtry, a good outing here late in the season against a good ball club. But he has to deal with Parker, so the inning is far from over. Breaking ball misses. And a fastball misses. Side three and zero. Oh. They're moving to the ninth at San Diego. Reds one, Padres nothing. Rounder right side, Manrique to his left. Easy flip to Palmero. The error doesn't hurt. The A strand their seventh runner of the night, and to the eighth we go. The Rangers have sent the minimum of 21 hitters to the plate in seven innings and trail 5 Texas time from Anaheim Stadium. Mike Witt for the Angels. Bobby Witt for the Rangers will also televise at 9 o'clock Saturday night. The final game of the season on Sunday at 3.05 will be the first pitch. Nolan Ryan and Chuck Finley on Saturday. Charlie Huff and Kirk McCaskill on Sunday. We will not televise the day game from here tomorrow when Brad Arnsberg throws against Dave Stewart. But some Ranger action left for you on the network between now and Sunday. And to the top of the eighth we go. Mike Moore retires for the night with a seven-inning shutout. Tony La Russa must have a little rest for the playoffs in mind here as Moore leaves and former Ranger Rick Honeycutt is in. Honeycutt on with his 63rd appearance of the year. He's 2-2 two and two with a 239 ERA. He was the one that stepped in to take over the closer chores when Dennis Eckersley was out for 50 ball games. Honeycutt had 12 saves in that span. 75 innings of work this year, 25 walks and 52 strikeouts. He faces Ruben Sierra, who will turn around and bat from the right side. Ruben, a 332 hitter right handed this year, and there's the base hit. Only the second of the night. And how long will this runner survive on the bases? <laughs> it's been a frustrating night for the Rangers. Sierra reached on an error in the second, erased in a 1 4 3 double play. Stanley singled in the third, a 4 6 3 double play. SB walked in the seventh, a 6 3 double play. And Harold Baines will be the hitter. Bobby Valentine has right handers Gonzalez, cool ball, Palmer, Cruder, and switch hitter Doherty on the bench. Errol Baines has been swinging pretty well against righties and lefties lately, so the skipper stays with the veteran here. And he chops one up the middle. Gloved by the shortstop, they'll settle for one, but they almost turn two. Walter Weiss and Mike Gallego with a beauty. I think if they had turned that double play, you might have to concede the rest of the ball game because nothing was going to go your way anyway. <laughs> Behind the bag, Weiss, a backhanded flip, a bare hand by Gallego. They almost turned it against Harold well, Baines. Oh, these guys are playing some kind of defense here this evening. Well, I put stars in my book next to good defensive plays. I've got five stars on the Oakland side tonight. They have really played well, especially on the infield. Here's Pete and Cavillia, 0 for 2. Where will this one end up? Almost in the third deck, way down left field way. 
You're kind of chintzy with the stars. I've got six of them. <laughs> well, we don't agree on everything, but <laughs> you got a different starring system. Eden Cavillia has hit into a double play and struck out swinging, gets to face a lefty for the first time. And it's inside from Honeycutt, a ball and a strike. Top of the eighth, five nothing Oakland. A's have out hit the Rangers, seven two. And Cavillia chops one. Look at Phillips to second for one. And they almost turn two again. That's another star. Yeah, make that seven stars in my book. Oh, Tony Phillips, Walt White, Mike Gallego, everybody getting into the act. Beat in Cavillia, the latest Ranger victim of great defense. And Weiss was diving behind Phillips, <laughs> just in case. This Watch looks Walt like Weiss back there. Looks like synchronized He's diving, diving here. <laughs> Boy. Two outs, Mike Stanley the hitter. So for the first time tonight, in Ranger inning will come to an end with more than the minimum number of hitters in the game appearing at the plate. Two and zero to Stanley. Mike is one for two, singling in the third, grounding out in the sixth. I think he gets thrown out stealing or picked off or something. Well, they're playing behind him, so that <laughs> should be a safe bet. The A's are more concerned with knocking the ball down than holding a runner at this point. McGuire well behind Pete. Stanley rifles one to right field. Canseco can't catch it. To the wall on one hop. We'll watch in Cavillia around third. He will hold. And Stanley motors in with a hard hit double the opposite way. Well, Mike Stanley said after last night's ball game that he was going to give up trying to hit the ball to right field. He had no success out there. Sent Canseco to the wall a couple of times. He tried it again one more time, and this time he found a hole over Canseco's head. Jose going to the line, but the ball really hit well and carrying just a bit further than he expected. And that double is going to bring a conference to the mound with Tony La Russa coming out. He has a right-hander ready in the bullpen. That appears to be Gene Nelson, who's on his way in, so Honeycutt is gone. And good defense has kept this from being a bigger Texas inning. No runs in yet, but a threat going on. Back to Oakland with a new pitcher after these messages. The bubble machine working here at the Coliseum. They're getting set for that champagne they're expecting to have later on. Right now, Tony La Russa has gone to the bullpen. He's come out with right-hander Gene Nelson. Nelson, been outstanding of late. He has only allowed one earned run in his last 21 innings of work. Last work four days ago, Minnesota worked an inning in two thirds of scoreless relief in that contest. Nelson on the year appearing in his 48th ball game. He is two and five with a 3.27 ERA. In 77 innings of work, he's walked 30 and struck out 65. That Bosley will face him. Hitting for Kunkel. Bosley, a homer, eight RBIs. All of those as a pinch hitter. And that Bosley hit a sack fly as a pinch hitter here last night after having a left center field double nullified when time had been called. But he could pick up the Rangers with a two run hit here. If the Rangers get another run on it would be a potential save situation for Denner Zeckersley with the tying run coming to the on deck circle. Bosley had a rip into the seats left side. Now he has to shorten up and hit the ball somewhere on 0-2. And speaking of Dennis Eckersley, Matt Young is alongside the right-handed closer in the Oakland bullpen.
down low. One ball, two strikes to the veteran left-handed hitter. Pinch hitter extraordinaire the last several years in the big leagues. And he just got a piece of it. Looked like Nelson changed speeds just a bit. And Thad just did make contact. After a couple of outstanding plays, resulting in two outs, Pete and Cavillia reached on the fielder's choice, and he moved over to third on the two-out double by Mike Stanley. Stanley, the lone offensive star tonight, two out of three. And not missing by much and thinking he had strike three was Gene Nelson. Hands on knees staring in at Greg Kosk, the home plate umpire. Oh, this awfully tough pitch. Mm. Goodness, how did he take that one? Bosley hanging tough. Nelson in his 48th appearance. Filling the count as the ball is outside. Three and two. On the bench, the Rangers still have some lefties available. On deck is Steve Bouchel, but they do have Rick Leach and Jack Doherty from the left side. They've moved into the ninth inning at Dodgers Stadium now, where L.A. behind Tim Belcher still leads San Francisco 1-0. The Reds lead San Diego 1-0 in the ninth, and we're told the Padres have two runners on in the bottom of the inning, fighting for their lives. Tony Gwynn up, that outstanding left-handed hitter, two on, nobody out for the Padres. 3-2 pitch coming to Bosley. Got a fastball down the line and left. It has a chance to drop, and he'll get another chance. Henderson, Weiss, and Phillips converging. Top of the eighth inning. Rangers trying to get on the scoreboard first. And then get back in the game. We actually have two on deck hitters now. <laughs> Rick Leach says to Boo, you may not be hitting. Nobody will be hitting now. Nelson strikes out Bosley. Rangers get two hits and strand their first two runners of the night. And in the middle of the eighth inning, it stays Oakland five, Texas nothing. Changes for the Rangers. Into the ball game is Scott Coolball playing at third. Fred Manrique will shift from second base to shortstop and from third to second. Steve Bouchel. And some drama taking place down the coast. The Padres have tied the Reds in the bottom of the ninth. 1 1, inning still in progress. And at the Dodgers hold on and beat the Giants. Top of the ninth, LA 1 0 there. There's still. A hint of a race in the National League West. Bottom of the eighth here, Tony Phillips, Mike Gallego, and Walter Weiss. For Oakland against Craig McMurtry. He's in his third inning of work. Ranger bullpen has been outstanding tonight. Only an unearned run over the last six innings. Fastball at the knees in the inside corner, and they just made an announcement here that I hope we get to hear at Arlington Stadium someday. Warning the fans to stay off the field after the game is over. 
on the heels of the hoped-for clincher here. I hope you folks in Arlington get to hear that someday. And tell your kids, stay in the stands with us and we'll celebrate right here. It'll happen. Tony Phillips. One for three, and we are told now it is a final in L.A. The Dodgers beat the Giants 1-0. Some of the fans here like it. Some of the others don't. Wouldn't that be something if San Diego suddenly won its game? They'll go at least go to extra innings. Three balls and a strike to Tony Phillips. A little Dodger pride showing through tonight. I'm saying you're not going to clinch it here, boys. A swing and a miss. It's now three and two. <laughs> On deck for the A's here in the eighth. There's the glove man of tonight, Mike Gallego. And a shot, one hopper to Bouchelle. One out. Okay. Mike Gallego, 0 for 3 as he steps in. something that the Padres come from behind and win because after an off day tomorrow the Giants finish the season in San Diego there's a breaking ball up high one ball one strike they play night games Friday and Saturday a day game Sunday and the Padres could have a chance if they sweep fastball up high two and one But they have to beat the Reds tonight first. There's a foul right side. Palmero chasing again near the mound, and it's unreachable. The Padres have to win them all. The Giants have to lose them all to tie things up and force a one-game playoff, which is also a possibility in the American League Eastern Division race. If Baltimore would win two of three at Toronto. And they are going to extra innings now in San Diego. 1-1. Craig McMurtry with a count of two balls, two strikes to Mike Gallego. Well hit right center. Ruben Sierra to his right and to his left making the play is Espy. Cecil and Rubin talking it over. And it'll be Walt Weiss hitting with two outs, bases empty. Looking ahead to the Ranger ninth. Steve Bouchelle, Cecil Espy, and Fred Manrique are the scheduled hitters against Gene Nelson. Breaking ball for a strike. Walter Weiss tonight one for three with a single and a run scored. Craig McMurtry trying to close out an outstanding three inning stint here. Mack has not given a hit. He's walked one fanned three. A runner reached on an error. And a chopper right side. Bouchelle waits for it. Nice going, Craig McMurtry. To the top of the ninth we go. The Athletics are three outs from the playoffs when we return. And on the field, nice gesture by Tony LaRussa. 
Carney Lansford deservedly so on the diamond but not on the field as Jose Canseco Tony Phillips moves to right field Rick Leach leads off for the Rangers batting for Steve Bouchel Leach a 274 hitter a homer 23 RBIs and a little line drive into left in front of Ricky Henderson Rick Leach with his sixth pinch hit of the year. And back to the top of the order, Cecil Espy. And the closer back up again. Dennis Eckersley will begin throwing in the Athletics bullpen. Let's go A's is the chant here. Cecil Espy 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. Side corner, a ball and a strike. The Royals leading 3-2 at California, but scoreboard watching now, hoping for a miracle Texas rally in this inning. Or else their season is over in terms of having a chance to win. Mike Moore with a chance to win his 19th of the year tonight. Seven shutout innings. SB strikes out on a low inside breaking ball. One out. Dean Nelson getting that breaking ball in a good spot. That was a split finger pitch. Going straight down and Espy out in front over the top. So Nelson records strikeout number two. They're getting eager. Jose Canseco among them. Fred Manrique 0 for 3 the hitter. They wouldn't end this thing on a double play would they? The way things have gone tonight it would be a very fitting ending. They've already turned three. Fly short center Gallego out there one out away far they have the most wins in baseball they're after number 96 here tonight Rafael Palmero 0 for 3 is the Ranger hitter
it's almost a business-like, rather subdued celebration by this Oakland club, as if they expected all along they would be the Western Division champions. They certainly are carrying themselves like that. Dave Stewart will pitch tomorrow. Mike Moore did the job tonight. Steve Busby, it's the best club in baseball. There's no doubt about it. All facets of the ball game, that big man included right there. Power, speed, defense, pitching. And experience, young players, new players. That man deserves an awful lot of credit, Tony La Russa, working around injuries to some very key players this year. Without Walt Weiss, Dennis Eckersley, Jose Canseco, Mark McGuire, Carney Lansford, all of them out for a time. Had a lot of trials and tribulations, but for the second straight year, the Athletics have won the American League West, and they will advance to the playoffs. The La Russa family celebrating another divisional title. And this one clinched in front of the home folks. Our hats off to Tony and the Athletics, the 1989 Western Division champions in the American League. Managers of great ball clubs sometimes don't get enough credit. And I think what's happened in New York, Steve, with the Mets has proven, even with the best team, quote, on paper, as they say, how hard it still is to win. Awful lot of motivation for the Athletics. They were very disappointed in their performance last year in the World Series. And Bobby said they looked like they expected to win. And I think this was just step one in their plan of going back to the World Series and this year winning it. And they certainly got things in gear the last half of the 1989 season. They have been a juggernaut going through the American League of Baseball, and they have taken that first step. Jose Canseco had a big blow early in this ball game tonight, a two-run homer in the first inning off Jamie Moyer. We knew it was gone. We didn't know if it would stay fair. Neither did Canseco for a while. But it did. Oakland took a 2-0 lead on his 17th of the year. And for that Jose Canseco home run, Budweiser will donate $100 to SAD, the Students Against Driving Drunk, in the name of Jose Canseco. Gracias for that. And the A's are the champions of the West. They beat the Rangers behind Mike Moore and Gene Nelson by a score of 5 to nothing. We've already totaled out the scorebook, but we'll wrap it up from Oakland in just a moment. flowing here in Oakland Tony Phillips doing the honors in the Oakland dugout now on his way to the clubhouse up that long runway it's a time for fun but I can tell you in the next 24 hours or so it'll be back to business for this Oakland ball club they beat the Rangers tonight five nothing out hitting Texas seven four Rangers three errors and Oakland one a stranded seven runners three for the Rangers Mike Moore the winner 19 and 11 with seven shutout innings tonight Jamie Moyer lasted less than two and he's the loser at four and nine it took two hours and 38 minutes to play it in front of 32,380 folks here at the victorious Oakland Alameda County Coliseum where the celebration has started and will continue for a while and deservedly so for the best team in baseball I'm Bob Carpenter with Steve Busby and Buzz for what the third time in the last four years right. now we've witnessed a club clinching the divisional title against the Rangers three different clubs mm -hmm. California Minnesota and now the Athletics. Yeah, we skipped last year but uh, now you saw what happened last year basically not against the Rangers but uh, the Athletics able to clinch it and uh, last year I think a surprise for a lot of people because uh, Oakland put together that ball club at the start of the 88 season and there was a lot of questions would it come together in time would the pitching be that good uh, would Bob Welch help that much would Dennis Eckersley be the closer would Dave Parker fit in and, and Dave Henderson but now uh, most of those questions have been answered uh, Mike Moore fitting in this year uh, the rest were knowns and with the addition of Ricky Henderson to stabilize uh, the defensive part of the field add that spark at the top of the lineup 
I don't think there's much doubt in anybody's mind that this Oakland Athletic Ball Club, if not right now, certainly has the potential of being the best ball club in baseball by far. And maybe over a several year period. Yeah. I hate to hear that word dynasty or to use it, but this is a ball club that may not be a dynasty because it's so hard to dominate like the old Yankees did in some of those clubs, the old Dodgers. But they are a ball club that looks like, because of its age and the different elements, that they can be contenders for quite a while. And we showed, uh, we were shown tonight here at the ballpark that they can do it with pitching and uh, power, but they can also do it with defense. Their defensive stats aren't that great this year, but guys like Tony. Tony Phillips right here, Mike Gallego, Wald Weiss, they're just able to make the plays. Now, just one indication of uh, what has brought this ball club to the point that they have arrived at now, the good defense the, by everybody involved. They're, even though the numbers wouldn't tell you that they're a great defensive team, they make outstanding plays, and this ballpark very well suited to their defensive skills, Wald Weiss and Mike Gallego teaming up incredibly well up the middle and uh, then Tony Phillips of course with the versatility well we don't want to talk strictly about the Oakland Athletics here because uh, obviously we would like to see the Rangers in this position someday and we're sure that it's going to happen it's a matter of when but Steve uh, I have to believe as time goes on and along with the Rangers on the road we watch these celebrations uh, you get the idea that this ball club will learn and learn the things necessary to do get the right people in place and they certainly seem to be on the right track but there's still a ways to go there's a ways to go but I think the the nucleus of a championship ball club is there now and, right. and I don't think you could have said that a year ago two years ago but it's in place now and people as we have said tend to forget how young this ball club is the Texas Rangers uh, the old man of the group if you will Harold Baines at just 30 and uh, beyond that Julio Franco only 27 so uh, you look at Ruben Sierra and, and Rafael Palmero and, and the rest of the cast Pete and Cavillia and Steve Bouchel and uh, certainly the, the pitching staff with the exception of Huff and and Ryan uh, a pretty young pitching staff still learning but they're trying to find out how all these pieces fit together very rarely does it happen the way that Oakland did it last year getting together a, a bunch of people that have not tried to compete with each other and having a winning ball club come out of that uh, of that situation the Rangers though uh, no doubt about the offense uh, that that's going to be there and with the exception of uh, or without a couple of key injuries to pitchers this year Jamie Moyer for one uh, Craig McMurtry for another and Charlie Huff not having a consistent middle of the year I think the Rangers uh, really had a legitimate shot at winning 90 or 91 ball games which in most cases will put you in the hunt but this ball club now that the Rangers have assembled I think is is very capable in the next couple of years of challenging the Oakland Athletics and anybody else in the division. And it goes beyond that as well because the Ranger organization from top to bottom has now sort of stabilized. They're not pulling a lot of players from double A straight up to the big leagues. Now in September they did because you can call up the young guys on the first of the month. But uh, I think in the next couple of years we'll see the results of what's going on now at Tulsa with the double A club. Guys like Juan Gonzalez and Dean Palmer at Oklahoma City with guys like Scott Coolball, Daryl Ackerfeld, who threw the ball well here tonight, and others. And uh, I think you'll see a real stabilizing taking place in the organization. That will eventually pay off with those one or two key players at the big league level and uh, maybe with a trade or two along the line somewhere. Well, I think this year, too, the Rangers learned an awful lot about how this ball club how the 89 edition of the of the Rangers needs to evolve into a winning club. Uh, they were a little shaky in in some aspects of winning baseball, the fundamentals of winning baseball. Certainly the offensive numbers were not shaky at all, but just the little things that go along with scoring runs, uh, what they have to do in the future to be competitive and to win. This ball club will win. Well, this ball club will win. The Oakland Athletics have won for the second straight year, and we'll clue you in a little bit more on the celebration as the festivities have begun here in the Bay Area of Oakland, California.
Next Ranger action on the network will be Friday night from Anaheim. We'll televise Friday and Saturday nights and the season finale on Sunday afternoon. Ranger fans, we hope you enjoyed it, and we tell you it'll happen at your ballpark someday. Someday soon, we hope. A's win it 5 nothing. Division title in the American League. And for Dave Burchett and Steve Busby, Bob Carpenter, good night from Oakland.